In the following example, let us put ourselves in what we called here the usual context. Let us start with the function f of x, so with some important function for which we will need to know the expansion, compute its Taylor series, and then show that the function and the Taylor series coincide, which will, of course, then show that this f of x has the power series representation. So in example three, let us find the Maclaurin series for sine of x. And then show that this series converges, in fact, to sine of x. So first, recall what the formula for Maclaurin series is. We would like to establish this equality with f of x being our sine of x. We want to show that it is equal to the infinite sum from 0 to infinity, the kth derivative of f at 0 divided by k factorial multiplied by x to the k. And so the idea is to establish this for some x's with absolute values at most r with a positive r. So in other words, we will need to know all the derivatives of sine x. So starting with the zeroth order derivative, which is the function itself, here is what we have. The first derivative of sine x is, of course, cosine x. The second is minus sine of x. The third derivative is, by differentiating the previous line, we will have minus cosine x. The fourth derivative is minus minus sine of x. So that is simply sine of x. And as you can see, we came back to sine x, which means that the fifth derivative will be again equal to cosine x. And the rest of the higher order derivatives will just repeat these four. So we have cycle in the derivatives of sine. Let us evaluate them at zero, because that is the point that we are interested in. So the zeroth derivative at zero is sine of zero, which is also zero. The first derivative is cosine at zero, which is one. The second derivative is minus sine of zero, which is also zero. The third is minus cosine of zero, so that is minus one. The fourth gives, again, sine of zero, so zero again. The fifth is 
at zero gives cosine at zero, so one again, and so on. So you see that now, since the values start repeating after the fourth derivative, we have the zeroth, the second, the fourth, and so on order derivatives vanish. So the even order derivatives of sine are all zeros. The odd order derivatives, so the first, the third, the fifth, are equal to one with alternating signs. So we start with one, then we get minus one, one again, f seventh at zero will be minus one and so on. So we have cyclic repetition in the derivatives. So the Maclaurin series for sine of x will therefore look like this. We will have, if we want to write out how this series starts, we have f of 0 plus f prime of 0 divided by 1 factorial times x plus f double prime at 0 divided by 2 factorial by x squared plus f triple prime at 0 divided by 3 factorial times x cubed and so on. So these are the terms that correspond to the values of k 0, 1, 2 and 3 in this series. So if we substitute the values of the derivatives of sine x that we computed over here, we see that firstly f of 0 vanishes, f prime at 0 is 1, so we have 1 divided by 1 factorial times x, which we can write like so, plus the second derivative at 0 vanishes, and then the third derivative at 0 is minus 1. So we will have, in fact, minus over here x cubed divided by 3 factorial. Then the next term will contain the fourth derivative at 0, which vanishes. And then the one after that will contain the fifth order derivative at 0, which is 1. So we'll have a plus again. And then we'll have x to the k, so x to the fifth, divided by 5 factorial and so on. After that, the signs alternate. And we are summing up over the odd powers of x. So if we were to write this series in sigma notation, it is equal to the sum k from 0 to infinity. Then we would put minus 1 to the k to account for the alternating signs. You see that we start with k equals 0, which corresponds to plus in agreement with what we see over here. And then we would put x to an odd power starting with 1. So that can be expressed like so. 2k plus 1 runs over the odd numbers and it starts at 1. So if you put in k equals 0 in here, you have x to the first and then the exponent grows in increments of 2. And finally, in the denominator, we will have 2k plus 1 factorial. So this is the Maclaurin series for sine of x. So our goal is to show that sine of x is equal to it. So 
let me remind you again that what we did here was we took a function, sine of x, and then we wrote down its Maclaurin series. But we do not know a priori that the Maclaurin series is equal to the sine, to the function it corresponds to. So this equality is so far not known to us. We have to establish it. We will do that using the remainder estimate or the tail inequality, just as we did for the function e to the x. But before that, uh, let me make a little comment here. So observe that the function on the left is odd, sine is an odd function. The function on the right only contains the odd powers of x. So somehow it makes sense to, ex to expect that the expansion of sine of x in power series will only contain the odd powers. Because as we discussed previously, odd functions, if you expand them around zero, will only contain odd powers of x. So this expression agrees with this observation that we made previously. Okay, now let us turn to establishing the equality. To establish, the above equality we use the Taylor inequality aka the remainder estimate So let us remind ourselves that according to the Taylor inequality, if we can establish that the derivative of order n plus 1 of our function has absolute value of at most m. Then it follows that the difference between f of x and the nth partial sum of the Taylor, in our case Maclaurin series, is at most m divided by n plus 1 factorial times x minus a, in our case 0, to the n plus 1. Right. So if we can establish this inequality for x minus a at most d, then it follows that this estimate is true also for this exact range of x. Right. And then we will show that the right hand side goes to zero. when n goes to infinity. Great. So now the question is, how do we establish something like this? Well, in general, we want to know the form of the nth order derivatives of f, except that this is something that we just did. 
we know precisely what all derivatives of sine of x look like. So, we have that the n plus first derivative of f is the n plus first derivative of sine of x and it can be one of only two things it can be either plus or minus sine of x or plus or minus cosine of x this is what we obtained over here we can only have plus minus sines or plus minus cosines of x therefore if we were to say that the n plus first derivative of x is bounded in absolute value by a number say m which number could we put over here so we will want to find a number m such that the absolute value of the n plus first derivative of f is at most in absolute value that number in our case because this derivative is either sine or cosine taking m equal to 1 works with m equal 1 this inequality is true absolute value of sine or cosine has absolute it is at most one. Great. So then, by the remainder estimate, we have the conclusion. We know that sine of x minus the nth partial sum of our Maclaurin series is at most 1, so this is the value of m, 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial multiplied by x absolute value to n plus 1. And so if we think of this inequality here as being true for absolute value x at most d without specifying d we can pick any positive number d and this inequality of course will be true because it is true for all values of x then the conclusion also holds for these values of x but what this means is that the right hand side is at most d to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial because we see that absolute value x is at most d so if we put the maximal value over here we get an estimate and this expression we have seen goes to zero Over here, we have established that the limit d to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial, when n goes to infinity, is 0. So this was something we showed in the course of example 2, when we dealt with e to the x. So here we can just reuse this conclusion and say, well, this goes to 0 when n goes to infinity and this holds for all d no matter which d you take this 
limit exists and is equal to zero. Great. So this shows that the partial sums of our Maclaurin series, which can be written like so, for our specific f, I'm going to put the general f here, just as a reminder what tn of x is. And so tn of, this tn of x goes to sine x for all x's, right? Because all our preceding discussion did not impose any restrictions on x. Here we could take any positive d, and regardless of the value of d, we get that absolute value of sine x minus t and of x is going to be small, it's going to converge to zero. Great. So this means that we have established the following representation for sine of x. We have shown that sine of x is equal, right, because the partial sums converge to sine of x, and so the infinite sum is equal to sine of x, k from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the k, x to the 2k plus 1, divided by 2k plus 1 factorial. And this is true for all x. In other words, the radius of convergence of this series is infinite. So this important representation here will be very, very useful to us and is widely used as many applications. So, for example, if you want to compute something uh, unusual, um, say value of sine at some strange number, say 1.4 that does not have, okay, I'm having trouble, ah, there we go. Um, say, if you want to take you want to determine the value of sine at something like 1.4, for example, what you would do is you would use this representation. You would replace x with 1.4, which would give you an infinite number series. But this number series is remarkable in that it converges very quickly. So it gives you a feasible way to obtain an approximation to the value of sine of 1.4. And in fact, all the software and all calculators, on all computers that need to evaluate sine at a certain point, what they do effectively is using this formula. They substitute the value into this power series, they obtain a number series, and then that infinite number series is truncated to the precision that is needed. So this formula obviously has big computational appeal, but it also is important in terms of pure calculus. Um, we will use it in the next example to obtain formula of the power series for cosine x. Um, and so it has both computational and what we call analytic importance.